fine. Uh, so let's get started. So let's get started with the first question. We will see what it is. What it is. The XYZ PLC has provided the following list of properties they use, they own. So the XYZ PLC, they have several properties. Identify what items to be classified as investment property out of the uh, many assets, many properties, what they have, what are the investment property? What are the items that should be classified as investment property? The first one, the property held under an operating lease. So here uh, I need to make a kind of simple amendment. So just take it as property held to be leased. So otherwise the required meaning is missing. So I want you to add after the held to be leased, to be leased under an operating lease, right? Property held to be leased under an operating lease. So make that particular change. The Putala Mithana for the amendment property held to be uh, leased. Property held to be leased under an operating lease. Operating lease is a rent under the Avenue properties. Okay, I would like you to attempt that first so you can indicate the answer probably in the chat. Then, depending on that, we may see what it is. Is it an investment property or not? And so you have to decide. The property held under an operating lease. Is it an investment property or not? Would like to hear you. Yes, would like to attend that. Indicate it. Indicate your answer. Whether it's an investment property or not. So I like that you're contributing. Do they take Palavini Vatkama property cap here now? Take the agony in may operating leases at the theater day, rent take at a den. If you have a property to be leased under an operating lease. What is that? No. So it says it's not an investment property. Why is that? So what is uh, the definition of an investment property? As per L case 40, we call investment property is a land or building or even land and building that is held to be leased, uh, that is to earn a rental income. The land or building, or even it could be land and building that is held to earn a rental or for capital appreciation purpose. And that's what we call the investment property. So when you come to the investment property, basically we have the property. The most important thing is a property. It talks about just land and building. It talks about land and building uh that is held to earn a rental so you want to earn a rental out of that you may leave you may rent that out and there you are earning a rental income or for the capital appreciation you may have some money with you so therefore you basically invest that in a land or something or even it could be a kind of building and your purpose is when the prices goes up in the future you want to sell that particular asset so that's what the purpose. So if you think in that particular direction, you can see the first one, property held under an operating lease. Property held to be leased. I asked you to add that to be leased under an operating lease. So it is exactly the kind of property that will earn a rental. So if you lease something out under an operating lease, so you are earning a rental. So, so it's a investment property. 
So therefore, the first one, it's an investment property. You need to identify it as an investment property. Right? Okay. Let's look at the second one. If the owner uses part of the property for its own use and part to earn rent use. So you have a property, say it's a building, land and building, and the part of that you are using for your own purpose. Maybe you run your office building there, so you may run your office there, or it is something, a kind of administrative purpose, or so like a PP, right? And part to earn rent you. And the part of that you have rented out and there you are earning a rental. Or for capital appreciation. Even the prices may go up, you may want to even sell that. This property is unable to sold or leased out separately. So when you come to this property, so you can see that it is used for uh, two purposes. The one is the part of that you are occupying for your own use. Maybe you may run your office building office there. Or sometimes uh, the other part uh, that is to earn a rental income. You might have rented out some of uh, the part of the building. And this property is unable to sold or leased out separately. So when you come to uh, the property, you cannot sold or leased out them separately. Separately in the sense, you cannot simply sell the office uh, alone. Or even the part that you have used for the as uh, investment property or the part that you use to earn a rental, you cannot simply sell them alone and accounted for separately. So in simple terms, you cannot simply distinguish this building. You cannot clearly distinguish this building and account for separately. So that's the point. If situation as such, when you consider about the entire property, what is that? Is it an investment property or is it a kind of PPE? That's a fundamental question. So, if you property, you know, property, you know, you know, property, you know, 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 or office can ne own occupied property ka keka PP. Because it will close the copy by the car no rent a car and karam. A big rent a great deal at the end. If you to me, you are a property car. But Eva gave a lot of key and a question. Yeah, if you to make a eka flow a car with Rafi Kunanda, the other than the other office second, the end flow a car with Rafi Kunanda, the head, so what a building nicky nature car take up to be Kunanana, may entire building nickel. Flows to no matter my cutter, we could understand the wind. But if the rebel of it, make a sold out, they're under the head separately. So, I will give me a map to make a counter and that the head separately. Eva the top taker of a property to classify the random cock with the head in a question. What that particular property? Is it investment property or is it PPE? Yes, I would like you to attend that first, then followed by the discussion. So just give it a try. The question is it investment property or not? If investment property is the net. That's the fundamental question. So what do you think? Yes, would like to see. Is it investment property or is it PP? If it, you see, it is investment 
property. Okay. I guess in fact, uh, so it basically uh, depends. You can say that it's an investment property or otherwise you can argue it as TP. So what is the argument basically? You have to say that uh, you have to here look at what is the dominant use. When you take this property in substance, you have to look at what is the most dominant use. Let's say that when you are looking at the particular uh, kind of uh, building, uh, let's say that your office is having in a particular small area, while the rest of the uh, floors for which you are using, it could be a kind of significant use. It may represent a significant use. But when it comes to the office building, it may be there in a kind of a small area. office small area a significant part of the building So in such kind of situation, you can see that what is the dominant use that is going to be the investment property. So if this unoccupied part of the property is insignificant compared to the uh, kind of uh, rental purpose, so you can classify it as an investment property. So in such instance, we can say it is investment property. So therefore, here your answer could be if the uh, the unoccupied property is a significant uh, insignificant component, or uh, we would like to uh, say it like this: uh, the property that is owned. Uh, sorry, the property that is occupied by the owner is insignificant if the property if the property occupied by the owner is insignificant the property is investment property that's how we are going to that that's how you should answer so you are going to say that if the property occupied occupied by the owner is insignificant or if the owner occupies insignificant part of the property, the property is investment property. So that's what you are saying. Otherwise, you can argue, you can say like that uh, the, the property that is occupied as uh, investment property, or you can say that if the property that is occupied to earn a rental, the property that is occupied to earn a rental is insignificant, the property is investment property. Uh, the property is unoccupied property. So basically, if you uh, unoccupied insignificant now, take investment property. If the connect again, good one. Rental purpose secretary use current part ticker property key insignificant now. Aker TP item. So that's how you must structure the answer. So what is insignificant? Then that would be the other use. So if the unoccupied component is insignificant, that is an investment property. If the uh, property that is occupied to earn a rental is insignificant, then that is a kind of PPE. So that's how you must answer. So hope that is clear. If it is not clear, better question, then I can further explain that. Then the third one, it says that the entity provide, and it provides uh, ancillary services to the occupant of a property held by the entity, the services are insignificant to the arrangement as a whole. So there you have a kind of property that you may own. And in that property, you have basically given that uh, to occupy by the people. So there are 
the third parties are occupying the building and you're also providing some services say that uh, it's a kind of apartment or something so it's an apartment so when you come to this apartment uh, you would be providing the maintenance so basically you take care of the maintenance of that particular building and also the security aspect the security and maintenance are being taken care by the owner and that's what we call the ancillary services or the services uh, what this particular uh, owner would provide to the occupants so let's say that the owner is providing a kind of maintenance service as well as some security service and compared to the entire arrangement you can see that these services are insignificant we consider those services to be insignificant so rapi to owner kenek inna apartment ekka ore apartment ekata e owner provide karana security service ekak ema natta maintenance service ekak so rapi danna samanya apartment ekak wage rent out karapu ha meka bohoma customer e e property ekata adala security service ekak maintenance service ekak provide karanna owner provide karana kiyana eka godak customer business practice ekak but e wage tatte eka api kiyana me ancillary services me laba dena anikut seva bohoma insignificant kiyala arrangement ekak e wage insignificant wenna welawaka services property ka own occupied property ka the pp da kiyana eka thamai question own occupied properties kiyanne api inventory saha pp walata right own occupied property kiyanne basically inventory saha pp uh the method api bedwood what is that if the situation as such is it a investment property or is it a kind of uh pp or let's say own occupied so what is your answer would like you to attend that Hope you are clear with the situation. Okay, as I said, I think when it should be PP. Okay. Yes, uh, you are correct that uh, the services are insignificant. But the point is, if the services are insignificant, we call them it is investment property. So that is the decision criteria. If the services that is provided are insignificant, that is going to be a investment property. If the services that is provided is significant. we call it it's a owner occupied property so what do you mean by uh, what are the examples for significant services say that there's a particular owner owner of a hotel and it's a owner managed hotel so when it come to that particular hotel you know uh, hotel is basically they provide the food and beverage apart from the security apart from the maintenance this owner would take care of the even the food and beverage so that is basically a service it is not just facilitate uh, uh, let's say it's a restaurant or something so it just not provide uh, the accommodation but together with this accommodation they are providing this uh, food and beverage so when it comes this food and beverage so it is a kind of significant service so in that if the service is significant you can see that it's a kind of owner occupied property in such an instance it is a kind of pp it's a kind of pp so that must be the decision criterion so whether it is a, the services are significant it should be pp the services are insignificant we call it it is a kind of uh, investment property so in this question it should be investment property right good
The next one we have the property rented to a parent or even uh, it may be a property uh, rented to a subsidiary. So it can be both. So if you are a kind of subsidiary, you may give your property, you may rent out the property to the parent. So if it is, if you are a kind of uh, subsidiary, uh, if you are a parent, you may rent that out to a kind of parent. So if you are a parent, you may rent that out to a subsidiary. So it can be both ways. So basically it's a transaction between the group. So that is the point what we are trying to highlight here. In the separate financial statement, this property may treated as investment property. Yes. So can that be the case? Let's say that you are entity A and you are the parent. Parent sense, uh, you made majority of the investment or you own majority of the shares of another entity. Let's say you are entity A and uh, and there's a subject, uh, sorry, you are XYZ PLC. Here it is given, you are XYZ PLC. So therefore, uh, let's say that you have 80% of the shares of ABC. If so, you know, you are the parent. Being XYZ, you are the parent. So you have view, you have rented out one of your properties to this uh, subsidiary. So that is ABC. So when you come to the individual financial statements of this XYZ PLC, uh, can this be treated as investment property? If you rent this out to a kind of subsidiary, so in your individual financial statement, or we call it separate financial statements, is it an investment property? That's the question it's about. What do you think? You XYZ, you are the parent and you have given a property, you have rent out a property to the ABC, say that is where you have the 80% investment. So you have rented out one of your buildings for them to occupy as their office building or something, or even a warehouse or something. If so, in the separate financial statements of the XYZ PLC, can this be treated as investment property? What is that? Yes, would like you to attend that. So what do you think? Are you clear with the question? Rapid parent clinic. Parent clinic when you have investment take up the tower entity, the majority of the shares. Apitum of the shares are on the ABC PLC. The quarter Eva Gavastava takes why is it a bit in a parent clinic kill. The quarter ABC is a subsidiary. Apitum of the parent kill, XYZ. So, api, api di na property ka, itong building ka, api rent out ka lahat yun know, ABC. Ito yun na puluang intergroup transaction. ABC ta api property ka rent out ka, ito kuta, uh, ayawas ta ay api ta a property ka, investment property ka api dira treat ka lahat puluang da, api financial statements wala, api separate financial statements wala. So I said PLC Taman when you had a financial statements well, make a investment property cut the kinik to my hand. What do you think? Now I think it is clear enough. Yes. What is that? Yes, it's a investment property. Yes, it must be treated as investment property. Yes, very good, very correct. In the individual financial statement or the separate financial statement, it must be a investment property. And also, uh, you know, when it comes to a parent subsidiary relationship, the parent need to prepare, apart from the separate financial statements, they need to prepare financial statement we call it consolidated financial statement. The financial statement that is prepared for a group, we call it consolidated financial statements. In the individual financial statements, or we call it separate financial statements of the parent, uh, they can recognize it as investment property. However, 
when it comes to the consolidated financial statement. So we have the XYZ PLC need to prepare. It is a kind of owner occupied property. It's a owner occupied property. It is not investment property. It is kind of what we call PPE or owner occupied property. So the parent can you know parent is it the way financial statements work at the car had done. If I think you know separate financial statements and it's among the entity it again with rough consider the next slide said PLC again and the rough consider the financial statements are the no you are a big you know separate financial statement. It take a parent had done on a parent can it will group pick them again consider the left financial statements had done. You are a big you know consolidated financial statements here. But with the rapid parent ABC as a XYZ subsidiary cup in ABC in an XYZ ABC can a entities they come up and see that the law parent had a financial statement so that you know consolidated financial statements the consolidated financial statements were available to mama uh method of the inner parent subsidiary to deal at the you know property the individual financial statement so they can press me up and get the demand parent a point of view with it uh acre investment property come have a thing of the group pick up not to pass see how do that that the parts of the company parent xyz subsidiary abc so the xyz side abc can it out of that parts of the cup name it a comment can die mark it up a group pick up the me group point of view with him by the power at the end of the day me property can occupy the running owners love and some acre on occupied property cup win and when i make a consolidated financial statement so that you can see that the road it's a kind of uh, we call it pp pp right but here the question asked about the separate financial statement of the parent no problem it's a investment property okay investment property like a parent get that thing in that one subsidiary get that thing in that one right okay the next one a plot of land held for a currently undetermined future use so you have some money so therefore you thought of uh, purchasing a kind of land you simply go and buy a land but you do not know what to do with that in the future so therefore when it comes to the use you are currently undetermined just go and purchase some land if you have a land that is held for undetermined future use what is that it's pretty straightforward what is that so would like you to contribute then this may be live otherwise i might even lost the energy right would like to see that you are contributing actively so just need to know that whether you are getting this or not so whether we like or not we had to switch to this online mode so i know that uh, you do prefer the pre uh, physical mode the most but unfortunately so due to the prevailing situation of the country again we had to switch to the online mode but somehow we try to ensure that uh, you are learning that at the end of the day. Yes, it says that it's an investment property. Yes, very correct. Very correct. It's an investment property. Good. Then we have the final one, a property acquired for a capital appreciation, but used by entity as its head office. You have acquired the property initially with the intention of capital appreciation. So that is what your purpose. But after some time, what you uh, what you did, you started to use that as your head office. Then you can see that there is a kind of transfer situation. So if you acquired property with the intention of capital appreciation, definitely it's an investment property. But after some time, you have switched the use. Currently, you are occupying that as a head office. So if you occupy that as a head office. Then what is that head of his it's a own occupied property. Hence, it's a PP. PP. Yes, very correct. It's PP. Right. So it's about the first question. The first one, the property held for uh, held to be leased under an operating lease. We agree that investment property. Second one, 
if the owner uses part of the property for its own use and part to earn rental and there we um, argued in both the direction if the owner occupied property is insignificant then it's a investment property if the investment property component is insignificant it's a own occupied property so therefore you could argue in the both direction third one it's about the ancillary services and there we agree that if it is insignificant it's a pp it's an investment property and if the services are significant it means that it's a pp but here it is about insignificant so therefore it is investment property the fourth one it is about the kind of uh, trans in transaction between parent and subsidiary so there you ask how to treat that in the separate financial statement so there we agree it is a investment property but in the consolidated financial statement it should be kind of uh, own occupied property the next one it's about the undetermined use this is straightforward investment property the final one it is capital appreciation and uh, after some time it has switched to a different use it's a currently used as the head office hence it's a kind of pp right so now we are moving on to the second question the region p a private limited owns an investment property which leases on a furnished basis so you are having a kind of property it's a land and building and you are leasing that out uh, under a kind of furnished basis furnished basis it's a furnished uh, property what make a lee badut samagama thamai api me property ekak leased out karanna and account for using the fair value model api me ekak fair value model ekata thamai account karanawa kiyala kiyanna so you know when you come to the investment property for the subsequent recognition you can go for either a cost model or fair value model so if you go to the cost model that is exactly similar to the pp so you may take charge the depreciation and you may test for the impairment and that's how it goes but if you go for the fair value model you know uh, you need to ensure that at each reporting date you are getting the fair value you are getting the fair value and that's how uh, you consider about the kind of uh, whether there is a kind of uh, movement in the uh, opening balance and the balance at the reporting date so if such particular movement is there it's a fair value gain or loss or we call it uh, remeasurement gain or loss investment property remeasurement gain or loss and the investment property remeasurement gain or loss must be taken to the pnl so api dana investment property wala da wahama initial investment property ekak api recognize karanna cost ekata ebe subsequently api yanna puluwang api choice ekak thiyena like in pp you can either go for cost model or fair value model so api the cost model ekata yanna puluwam fair value model ekata yanna puluwam so api cost model ekata giyoth apita siddha wena depreciation charge karanna එතකොට අපි depreciation charge කරනවා ඒ වගේම impairment එකක් සිද්ධ කරන්න වෙනවා. එතකොට carrying amount එක අපි compute කරයි cost minus accumulated depreciation minus accumulated impairment loss. So it is straight forward it is exactly similar to the PPE. But if you go for the fair value model එතකොට අපි fair value model එකට ගියොත් you know there we do not find something called depreciation. එහෙම වුණොත් අපි depreciation කරන්නේ නැහැ. instead what we do at each reporting date we are establishing the fair value at each reporting date we get the fair value you know how to get the fair value for a building so you can refer to the uh, nearby properties then you can look at what is the price per square foot square feet and then you may get them multiplied by the number of square feet and you may simply get the fair value so that's how we do the fair value in the last class we discussed but uh mona mona am ho aakare king kenne market approach ekak wenna puluwa income approach ekak wenna puluwa oh mari same reporting date ekata ma api fair value ekak establish karana etakota api kalachchede aarambhaye wadinakamak thiyena property ekata kalachchede awasane wadinakamak thiyena 
කාලච්ඡේදයේ ආරම්භයේ සහ අවසානයේ තියෙන වටිනාකම අපි TNL එකට තමයි චාර්ජ් කරන්නේ. ඒකත් එක වෙනසක් TP එක කතා සලකා බැලුවා. ඒකට TP වල රීවැලුවේෂන් එකක් කරපුවාම අපි gain එකක් තිබුණොත් OCI යන. loss එකක් තිබුණොත් TNL. හැබැයි fair value model එක යටතේ investment property එක gain එකක් හෝ loss එකක් තියෙන මේ දෙකින් මොකක් තිබුණත් ඒක අපි අවසාන වශයෙන් අරගෙන යන්නේ TNL එක. That is another kind of difference. So here it says that we are applying the fair value model. So as of 1st of January 2018, the property had a carrying value of 250 million, including rupees 23 million relating to furnishing. So the kind of carrying amount or the fair value at the beginning of the period was 258. In that, uh, the value of the furnishing uh, it is 23 million. But me, we but all but now come drag that to take a million and sit to now. During the during 2018, the region private limited replaced the furniture at a cost of 62 million. So you feel that the furniture what you have, uh, it is not suitable for the use. So therefore, you thought of replacing that. So you incur a cost and you purchase some new equipment, uh, new uh, furniture for this particular property. You replace that, incurring 62 million. At 31st December 2018, the fair value is also given at the end of the period. Uh, you know that if you go for the fair value model at each reporting date, you need to get the fair value, and that particular remeasurement has to be done. So you did the remeasurement; it's 339 million. What amount should be replaced within profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 2008? And what must be the amounts that you should recognize in the PNL? That's the question is about. Okay, so you can give it a try. So if you uh, do that using a kind of account, that would be easy. Apni thora ne kiti account ka hadla, dabo ne thora goda pahe dili vei P N L ne kiti charge karan roani mano adhi kine kar. Second question, you can basically take. So let me copy the question, right? So you can try that out. You can identify how much should be the amount. Property. Right here, I have taken that. So, can you see the Excel sheet? What I'm currently in. So, hope you all can see, right? Currently, I'm in the Excel sheet. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fine. So, let's get the values. At the beginning of the period, uh, so it says that uh, the property value carrying amount is 258. So you can simply take that 258. So that is a balance brought forward. Balance brought forward. That particular value is there at the beginning of the period. Then during the period, uh, you, are, you have replaced the furniture. That is in the sense. 23 million worth of furniture you uh, you disposed. So therefore you can take it to a disposal account. You can take that to a disposal account, 23 million. And also you add furniture at a cost of 62 million. So the cash gets credit, here it gets debit. And at the reporting date, it says that the property value is 339 million. So the value of the property at the reporting date, take the balance carried forward, you can get 339 million. 
So that's how you remeasure. At each reporting date, you are taking this balance carry form. So that is same reporting date. Take that number. Fair value we can know again. That means balance carry forward. Take it. And do not go any more. Take a million to one thirty. It's not bad. So the things as such. Can get it. You can see whether there is a kind of difference. 362, 362. You can see that there's a balancing figure on the debit side. What is the balancing figure? It is 42. There's a balancing figure comes 42. And what is that? You would debit the investment property and you need to credit that to the PNL. And we call it, this is the gain on remeasurement of PP. Farm to provide a simple extract of property, plant, and equipment. Sorry, uh, extract from statement of profit dollars, right? It's a kind of extract it's from statement of profit dollars. loss and uh, other companies in farm for the year ended 31st March 2020 sorry not 31st March uh, it is uh, 31st December 2018 so it 31st December 2018 you can see that there's a gain so that particular gain you usually recognize under the other income. So other income. So when you come to this other income, you recognize it as gain on remeasurement. Gain on remeasurement of investment property. How much that particular gain? It is 42. So that's how you recognize. Let's say figure sign. Millions. Huh? I take figures in millions. Figures millions are in Oh, 339 million. Kinati. Otherwise, as usual, you can take them in thousands. So that is how we normally do it. So let me take them in thousands. Right, so therefore you can see that the gain is going to be 42. Let's take the figures in thousands. 42 million. Right, here we have it. And he said all. What about this disposal? So if you had create an account for this disposal, that should also be considered. So this kind of office equipment, uh, the furniture you are disposing. So therefore, furniture disposal account has to be there. You credit the investment property and you debit that 23 million. It comes from investment property. So do you receive any cash proceeds for that from this disposal? No, it seems not. So if you had received some cash, you would have taken that. So you know, even uh, the PP disposal, this is how we do. So if you have cash, so the cash gets debit, it gets credit to the furniture disposal. Then uh, the difference goes to the PNL. Here we don't have any cash proceed. So therefore the entire thing is a loss to us. It goes to the PNL. 23 million. 23 million. So therefore, you might take 23,000 to the kind of PN. So the loss on this was loss furniture. 
lost on disposal of furniture, 23,000. You may get that. Right. So this is how we do. So is it clear? Anything that you are not clear with would like to answer? Anything that you are not comfortable with? We can see that here we do, do not worry about the depreciation, isn't it? No depreciation at all. That's why I told you if you go for the fair value model, no depreciation. At each reporting date, just take the fair value and compare that with the opening balance and the moment must be recognized as well. So loss on disposal uh, is other expenses, yes. Okay. So you need to take them under the other expenses. It's not something usual, does not fit with any other expenses. Right, okay. Fine. So that's how we do the second one. Now let's move to the third question and see. Right. The third question, again, it tests your knowledge on a particular aspect. We'll see the mega private limited develops office building for rental. Uh, you are, say you are mega private limited and you are developing kind of office building for rental. So it's a investment property. If you develop a particular kind of building with the intention of rental, it is investment property. Subsequent to the completion of a building, it incurs expenses such as securities, utilities, and marketing that must be incurred before the building has secured a reasonable level of occupancy. Now what you have done, so you have finished the completion. You have finished the construction of the office building. Now it has come to a kind of the intended use. It has come. The property has now come to the intended use. But after that, you are incurring some expenses like securities. So you may have to take care of the security aspects and the utilities. So like uh, uh, whatever the electricity, the water, those aspects and also marketing. So you need to even uh, undertake some marketing aspect. Uh, you need to advertise this particular property in order to get the required level of uh, occupancy. You need to do that. That must be incurred before the building has secured a reasonable level of occupancy. So, you know, immediately after completion, you may not get the required level of occupancy. Uh, so, therefore, you need to do some advertising aspects uh, and other aspects uh, to get the required level of participants, occupants. The usual time between the building's completion and securing a reasonable number of tenants is approximately three months. So normally it takes three month period after the completion to get the required level of occupancy. Then it asks how to treat the expenses like securities, utilities and marketing. The fundamental question that you need to answer is whether you can capitalize those expenses or whether you should expense them. That's the fundamental question. property Property का खादन में हिटी अब ये property की वैरायटी की वर्क करा, तो मुझे वैरायटी की वर्क करा पूरा मामा अभी तो अभी आवश्यक है ना प्रमाणिंग occupancy का क्लब एक ही ले इतना नहीं बहने, तो अभी तो मैं अभी है दुआ जब किसी property का कभी rent करने पुरुवां, अभी तो मैं apartment का, it's office building right, तो कभी rent करने पुरुवां, तो मैं सीए देने के, तो हाथ पूरा मांग अभी तो सीए देने के मैं locate कर Soon after the completion. Namut api hidra make up at least a yandone occupants asu of patindone. Sapita, a collective karagana, some are without marketing aspects karandavi, eva game make it in thousands of facilities, can take care of karandavi, utilities, atramapi electricity wagi cost in the karandone, with a water bills given done, securities. Uh, expenses until we are getting the required level of occupancy. Then the question is that uh, the cost that we incur after the completion of this particular building until you get the such kind of 
occupancy uh, can they be capitalized or should they be expensed that's a question eva ge vedan api capitalize karana ada natham expense karana kiyana ekak thama prashna so this is something very straightforward i would say it's a very straightforward thing we make a hard and straightforward there the standard ekak pahadiliyama kiyala tiyenawa the cost that you incur once the uh, investment property uh, become uh, comes to the intended use until you get the required level of occupancy those cost cannot be capitalized so once the property comes to the intended use or in other words once uh, the construction of the property is over once the construction is completed the cost what you incur thereafter until you get the kind of required level of occupancy uh, those cost has to be expensed so therefore here how the uh, how those cost to be treated you need to say that that should be expensed the answer should be expensed so metana tiyenne hari me straight forward karnawa api property ka develop karala ivara unata passe api avashya taram pramanayak occupants la labena kan api darana cost ekak api mokak kala yutu securities wage dewal utilities maintenance marketing me dewal atharama maintenance nature kene securities utilities kiyanne maintenance nature kene marketing kiyanne advertising nature ke expenses but basically api metana inka karala tiyenne maintenance cost saha advertising cost promotion cost promotion and maintenance so me de promotion saha maintenance kiyanne dewal apita capitalize karanna bae eka tricky point ekak thamai eka api hitenna puluwang कंप्लीट कराट आप इतने रिक्वायर्ड लेवल ऑफ ऑक्यूपेंसी है ना काम आप इनका करने कॉस्ट आप इतने कैपिटलाइज कराने पुरवां के लिए नमूद द स्टैंडर्ड वेरी क्लियर सेस दैट द कॉस्ट ऑफ दैट नेचर दे शुड बी एक्सपेंस्ड द मेंटेनेंस कॉस्ट द प्रमोशन कॉस्ट दैट यू इनकर वंस द प्रॉपर्टी इ The co those cost must be expensed, so they are, they should be expensed, right? Okay. So hope that is clear. If you are not clear with that, uh, better to question that, right? Okay. Another uh, kind of question, the question four. They are also uh, we are trying to uh, look at a particular theoretical aspect. Uh, whether you are getting that or not a private limited purchase a land with a building that is unusable for total consideration of 200 million you purchase a land with a building but when come to this building that building is uh, in a unusable condition so only you see the value primarily in the land right you see the value primarily in the land when it come to the building building is in a unusable condition for a total consideration of rupees 200 million million this year ka tama api me property ka gatte the building is demolished after the purchase and new building will be constructed instead and the building api demolish karala e wenawata api alut building ekak construct karana api purpose ekak the total cost paid to a third party to demolish this particular building is rupees 10 million so then the building ek api kada ivat kirim sadaha darapu kiriwaya thamai miliyana 10 both the land and the new building meet the definition of investment property land sa building ek investment property definition ek meet karana ip stands for investment property and a private limited uses the cost model under the lks for investment property sana ha cost model ka use karna hoy it's determined that any other market participant acquired the land would demolish the current building uh, that is expectation even if you, this particular land is acquired by a party other than you in order to uh, take the particular land to a kind of usable condition they do also demolish the current building if such identified 
the demolish cost uh, the, in the sense uh, what you are going to do with this demolition cost cost of demolish so can you capitalize that or can you or should you expense that that's a fundamental question so the method of question is in a maybe in the higher demolition somehow we don't care to take a capitalize current put on the human at down a the expense color you to the team yes what is your answer what do you think should be capitalized or should be expense this would like to hear you yeah you see should capitalized yes very correct so we need to capitalize that so why is that because when you come to the investment property they it talks about uh, several kinds of cost like in the pp the first type of cost it would be the acquisition cost the purchase price of the land and building acquisition cost and also the second most important cost it's about the uh bringing the cost to the intended use and condition so bringing the asset to the intended use and condition so when you come to this in order to bring that particular property for the intended use so definitely you need to demolish the existing building so therefore it's a directly attributable cost the cost that you need to incur in order to make the use out of this particular property in order to make the use out of this land so definitely you need to destroy this building and you may go for a new building hence this 10 million is a directly attributable cost directly attributable cost so it's a part of the cost of the investment property it's a part of the cost of the investment property so that's how we do Moving on to the final one, I believe it's the last question. They are okay. We'll see. The Mount View Private Limited acquired land and building at a cost of rupees hundred and sixty million, including like ten million legal and other acquisition cost. So you are Mount View Private Limited. You acquire a land and building. You acquire a property at a cost of rupees hundred and sixty million. Million ekasi hatta kada property ka acquire kara. it redeveloped the site into apartments for rental under operating leases then having acquired this particular property you have redeveloped that you did some improvements uh, to convert that into a kind of apartment uh, where you expect to uh, rent them under the operating leases and wishes to classify the development in its balance sheet as investment property so now you think of uh, classifying it as investment property that is perfectly fine because if you acquire a particular property with the intention of developing it as a investment property yes that is investment property no problem with the classification in that the following cost have been incurred so you need to demolish uh, the existing improvements existing building what it was there or something and the demolition and site preparation cost of 15 million is there and also the construction cost you need, you had to construct a new building the construction cost was 180 million including rupees 12 million for labor cost arising from a labor strike so there were kind of cost that arise from a labor strike labor strike it mean kata nisa e hetu no tapi cost ekak darla tiyenawa probably Uh, whatever the payments that you had made uh, for this labor uh, during the period of labor strike labor strike ke ak yana kaale atarathura labor strike give salary ka pen kuluwa and additional additionally rupees 5 million was received as income for a short period prior to the con, uh, prior to construction when the site was used as a car park but uh, construction patan ganna kalin api me property එක car park එකක් විදිහට භාවිත කරලා තියෙනවා. ඒතකොට එතන ඉතින් අපි ඒක රුපියල් මිලියන 5ක් වගේ ආදායමක් ලැබිලා තියෙනවා. considerable money 
what is the amount should be recognized initially as investment property na investment property ke anduna agathu yutu vadina akama kiyada kiyana ekama question ek yes you can try that out let me copy the question so how much cost that you should capitalize that's the question is about is investment property so how about uh, let's uh, do this together how about the 160 million that you incur for the acquisition can we take that can we capitalize that 160 million the acquisition cost that you incur yes that's a part of cost so it is the acquisition cost so it is definitely a part of the cost of the investment property then the demolition and site preparation earlier in the question also we agree that demolition should also be a part of that cash that you incur for the demolition 15 million that should also be the case the construction cost 180 million what do you think about that 180 million yes you have done it correctly construction cost 180 million so there you need to be little conscious because you can see that 12 million uh, for labor cost arising from the labor strike and this is what we call basically an abnormal loss it's a abnormal loss under any circumstances you cannot capitalize the abnormal losses if you have abnormal losses that must be immediately charged to the pnl so therefore out of this construction cost you should take 180 million minus 12 million to the investment property the 12 million should be charged to the pnl so consequently 180 million minus 12 180 million minus 12 million we are taking things in figures uh, things in thousands so it is 168000 that should also be capitalized but you need to mention this this 12000 labor cost labor cost you should charge that to the pnl charge them to the pnl it's abnormal loss the justification is that abnormal losses should not be capitalized then it talks about additional rupees 5 million that you had received before you start the construction this is very practical aspect isn't it you have kind of uh, building if you have a kind of property say it's a land or something so until you start the construction it is pretty much common that uh, you may be occupying that as a uh, to earn some other income so here also you have done the same you have uh, occupied that as a kind of park and in that you have earned some income over there so it does not have any relationship to the investment property so it is simply a other income so if you have that rupees 5 million that must be recognized as a other income so it is about it's other income right so it seems like that you need to consider them in the investment property but it is not it is uh, there you find that there's no relation to the uh, bringing that particular property to the intended use it is not something that you receive in the process of bringing that particular asset to the intended use because uh, you have a kind of understanding that uh, when you come to the dpe there we discuss that if you have uh, testing uh, 
the cost of testing you need to capitalize before the commercial production begins if you need to test the property uh, those has to be kind of capitalized uh, and also in the process if you had generated some output the output what you may sell to an outsider you can uh, set off that from the cost of testing the ppo le mata gadi pudalata api katha kara cost of testing thibunoth so the cost of testing will ing api ayin karanawa api e test run ekke di api je production ekak karoth e scrap ekun la ganna modala so metanat e argument ekem hitala hitenna puluwa me rupees 5 million api hoya pu eka apita bari the investment property ekata against ganna so the standard is very clear on that so here you can see that it is not something related it is not the kind of outcome that comes in the process of converting the investment property for its intended use so the maker may investment property ekka intended use ekata convert kirime di athi wena result ekak neme the pp wala testing cost ekak kiyanne api property ekka ए पीपी एक है इंटेंडेड यूज़ से करे गेन एक बड़ा कला युक्ता एक ऐसे पाले आप इधर तमा इनकम में के जेनरेट हैं अबे में तो ना आप इधर इनकम में काफ़ी जेनरेट कर रही है ना में के सिंपली आप ही ऑक्यूपाई कर लेती है ना कापा के काफ़ी दिए तो और में कापा के काफ़ी दिए बावित आकी दी मैं किसी में स Right. Uh, in this question, as uh, renting under the operating lease, is it correct to specify under investment property? Okay, let's look at the question. Uh, Mount acquired land and building at a cost. Uh, Redo and site into the apartment for rental under operating lease. Yes, that is perfectly fine. Uh, if you rent something under the operating lease, that means that the property belongs to you, right? Only if, if you had rented out under the finance lease, that is the point where I should de-recognize the property. But if you are renting it out under the operating lease, that is perfectly fine. The property belongs to you. So only if you uh, rented that out under the finance lease, it suggests that you need to de-recognize the property. So the property ka kabi operating lease se apte dena ki ani ma property ka apni potkala tamam apni recognize kala diya ganda. उट so really appreciate the concerns what you are bringing good uh in labor cost also identified as an other expense uh yes uh, when it comes to this labor yes labor cost it's other expenses yes. labor cost in the sense the abnormal loss abnormal loss of the labor cost so therefore it's abnormal loss if it is abnormal in nature it should be under the other expenses good very correct If you try to give appropriate heading, it should come under the other expenses. Right. So that's about the investment property. So since we have uh, some time, uh, we can move on to the discussion of some questions in uh, chapter five, that is about accounting for assets. So let me take you through that as well. Right. So it is something again uh, you have discussed in the video recording. So I thought of taking that the discussion. Right, accounting for assets. That is your chapter five, chapter five tutorial. So in the next class, probably uh, I'll be taking you through the uh, tutorial on uh, borrowing cost. We may have a look at that, and also uh, the impairment. we have discussed only one question 
uh, that is related to the individual, individual asset. So we'll be discussing about uh, the empowerment for a kind of uh, group situation, uh, group in the sense, group of asset. That is what we call the cash generating unit. The empowerment for a cash generating unit we may discuss in the next class and also some question on liability. So that would be the next class arrangement. So today we thought of moving to the assets. Okay. So in the asset tutorial, uh, we may start with a uh, pretty much easy question. Uh, let me straight away take you to the uh, kind of question number four. You are given several properties. Uh, classify the following asset into the current and non-current. Let's start with that. PP, what is that? The appropriate classification of property, plant and equipment. Is it current asset, non-current asset? Would like you to contribute. Let's keep it in an interactive way. Yes, it's pretty much obvious. The PP items are non-current. Okay, good. Uh, investment property, what we have just discussed. Where you should show this investment property in the statement of financial question. Is it under current assets or is it a non-current investment property? It's a non-current, yes. Biological assets. What do you mean by biological asset? Living animal law, plant. Used for the agricultural purpose. Living animal law, plant. Used for an agricultural purpose. So if you think about the tea plantation, you can see the tea bushes. So the tea bushes is a classic example for a biological asset. It's a living plant. So you need to valid that. Value them at fair value less cost to sell. And if you take a kind of uh, living animal, how about dairy cattle? So if you take a bevela farm or something, so the dairy cattle, what they have, it's a living animal that is used for a agricultural activity. So it is to uh, harvest the milk. So it's a biological asset. So the living animals, plant that is used for agricultural purpose must be the case. Rabbi biological asset take up here, living animal clinic, living plant take up, use karana agricultural purpose. If you have a lot of people who are living animals or plants, they will have an agricultural purpose. So sometimes it may be used for the recreational purpose. That is in the sense, uh, uh, that is to kind of, uh, what do you call that, uh, recreational activities in the sense. Uh, uh, so that is to add some beauty uh, to kind of the uh, business. Uh, if I'm to give you an example, you might have seen that if you take this tourist hotel, uh, they have these uh, elephants. So they will provide the tourist with uh, the rights on elephants. So if you see that, is it agricultural activity? The elephants are using for agricultural activity. No, it is for a recreational activity. That is to give some entertainment, to provide some entertainment to the foreigners. So it's a kind of purpose other than uh, the kind of agricultural purpose. So therefore those elephants is not biological asset, but they are PPE. In such an instance, those elephants are PPE. So me biological standard, biological uh, agricultural standard decade, agricultural living animal plant So uh, tourist hotel the elephants Ali in no offer tourist letter, uh, ride the tourist la Kamati, Raliakit in Agland, for Eva Gidia Tatu take a agricultural purpose of name. A bay, asset taking a chicken, biological. Agricultural purpose, 
Vedak purpose sector Bavita Kermati and Nisa, that is uh, to use in the primary business activity. So therefore, it is a TP. Eavastavi api alia, classify Kergane, TP item make up with it. What in Akamakin, a cost take Vedak by Kergan net, say alia vapi, account for an TP with it. The biological asset, I mean, a bay, dairy cattle slap. But a then I'll be paying a harvest around the milk, agricultural activity. A cup, air sorry, classify around the biological assets here, right? So that is just to give you a kind of understanding about the biological asset. So tea plantation, a common gata tea bushes, so what up a tea plantation, a cagana hit wood, uh, tea trees, mango trees, uh, if I get it, it's under put on with the plantation companies can. So if elephants are considered as TP, how they are accounted and depreciated? Uh, do we depreciate it or not? So definitely we would depreciate. Why is that? If you take a particular elephant, uh, the period that you can use that particular elephant in the business is limited. So maybe 10 years, the useful life of that particular elephant could be 10 years or say 15 years. So, if you have a question, you can ask me to ask you to ask me to ask you to ask me to ask you to ask me 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 to uh, a price cycle, a pretty recognized term. It was Pasupal, no, a bit of a shana, revaluation model like a Matian. So, Ralia given the Pulavat Nakama Bellu, Eker, right? It's a kind of fair value of the elephant. So, it is possible, right? Good. Right. Uh, so, here the question is about biological asset. So the biological asset take a copy for whom other classify current. Is it current? or non-current. Basically, biological assets are non-current assets. Biological asset must be shown under the non-current assets classification. Intangible assets, if you have intangible assets like, say, it's a trade license, or it's a kind of copyright that you have, or a patent, so likewise, or a kind of accounting software, say, it's a ERP system, which you acquire under millions of cost. Those are intangible assets. And intangible assets must be shown under the TP. Yes, very correct. Uh, not TP, sorry. Uh, intangible assets should be shown as non-current assets. Non-current assets. Then you have non-current asset held for sale. What is that? Say that you have a motor vehicle. So motor vehicle is basically a PP item. So it is a non-current asset. But uh, let's say that today is 31st March 2020, that is your reporting date. Today you decide that within the next year, you are going to sell that motor vehicle. You want to sell that motor vehicle, you are going to replace that with a, a new motor vehicle. So somehow you want to sell that. So if you are going to dispose that particular motor vehicle within the next 12 months, it is called the non-current asset held for sale. If it is a non-current asset held for sale, you must show them as a current asset, current asset, under the current asset. Why is that? Because it is going to get realized within next 12 months. Idri maas dola hai tulata, me vatkama realize leno. Idri maas dola hai tulata, realize karagana deva dola tapi kiya nawa current asset. It's a current asset, right? Then you have inventories, quite straightforward current asset, cash and cash equivalent, current asset. Investment in subsidiaries, what is that? Investment in subsidiaries, you have a kind of uh, uh, investment, say you are XYZ PLC, you acquire majority of the shares of another entity, say 60% of the shares of ABC PLC. And that is what we call the investment in subsidiary, investment in subsidiary. And in fact, it's a non-current asset, non-current asset. It's a non-current asset, right? Yes. 
Then what about the investment in joint arrangement? It's like this. So if I'm to give you an example for a joint arrangement, say that you are entity A, you are entity A P L C. Let me take it here. The joint arrangement is something like this. You are A P L C, and there's another friendly entity of yours, say B P L C. Both of you may come into a kind of agreement. You come into an agreement. What kind of agreement? It's an agreement to jointly control. Jointly control another entity. So what a pay entity is a pay friendly tawat entity kapi kapi agreement take it in a mock out the jointly control per under our entity. So jointly control another entity, right? So in that, let's say the entity that you wish to control is CPLC, and there what you do, you are going to share the control. So you are going to make the investment. Say that APLC invests forty percent, BPLC invests sixty percent. If you forget about this joint control, say that it is not there. So, so uh, forget about that. Simply, there is one entity called CPLC. APLC purchases forty percent. BPLC purchases sixty percent. What is that? If you look at it from the B's point of view, what is CPLC? If you purchase sixty percent of the share capital of CPLC, from the B's point of view, what kind of investment is that? Abhi me joint agreement ke naam tak karo. Abhi tum CPLC ke liye entity ka kya na? Ek hai. BPLC कोटा स्प्राक दाने सीए टे हटा कत्पत करेगा नहीं नो APLC कोटा स्प्राक दाने सीए टे हतलिया कत्पत करेगा नहीं नो इन द थिंग्स एस सच व्हाट इस CPLC सॉरी व्हाट इस BPL व्हाट इस CPLC तो द BPLC और इन अदर वाइज द इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट द BPLC हैड मेड इन C व्हाट इस दैट एंड इट बी एकर सी के कर लेती इन्वेस्टमेंट एक म Investment in subsidiary, and uh, if you look at it from the A's point of view, what is that particular investment? If you have investment uh, which is not up to the <clears throat> majority, but a considerable investment, say it's ranging from twenty percent to fifty percent. The particular investment is ranging from twenty percent to forty percent. We call them, but yes, it's called investment in. Associate. So therefore, if you forget about the kind of agreement in the books of A, they would recognize the CPLC's investment as an investment in associate. BPLC would recognize it as an investment in subsidiary. But in a situation like this, if something of this nature is there, what is that? APLC and BPLC would come into agreement to jointly control another entity. There they agreed to own shares like forty percent and sixty percent. If that is the case, and this become a joint venture, joint venture. So APLC and BPLC are joint venturers. They are joint venturers, right? They are joint venturers, and this is a joint venture business. And this is called the CPLC, is a joint venture. For both entities, it's a joint venture, right? And here, the good thing is that none of the parties is superior. Kisi ma party ka superior hai nahi. Both are having equal say. Didn't I tell you na? Bala thala ekai. Because there is agreement between them. None of the parties can do. The things on their own wish. In all the times when it comes to the decision making, they do have to make decision with the unanimous consent. In order to proceed, in order to proceed with the decisions regarding CPLC, the unanimous consent of both the parties are required. So, what I mean by that? BPLC is here to help. I think I have seen a CPLC. 
joint arrangement that is one form right so in fact uh, when you come to this uh, joint ventures but a uh, joint arrangement pala aakara dekak thiyena but me ek aakaraya ke ekata api thiyena joint venture ekak thiyena ehema naththam eka ettarama joint operation ekak wenna puluwa me wage aplc is there dplc is there they come into a kind of agreement the agreement to come into agreement to jointly control jointly control operation jointly control oh, an operation it's not a business it's a operation then make a villa the mc operation ekak patan ganna together what is that if i'm to give you an example aplc and dplc may come into agreement to uh, carry out a kind of gem mining business so gem mining operation aplc sa bplc mudal yoda wala patan ganna manik patala so it is not necessarily an entity well established entity but it's just a operation ekata api kiyena joint operation ekak thi right it is another form of joint arrangement it's a joint operation so that is also the other form of joint arrangement earlier it was a joint venture the distinguishing feature there they have a established business there they have established business but here no established business it's just an operation o oh, aplc and dplc may come into kind of agreement to uh, build a ship ship නැත්තම් තව උදාහරණයක් කිව්වොත් මම entities දෙකක් ඉන්නවා දෙකක්ම අවශ්‍ය නැහැ තුනක් හතරක් වෙන්නත් පුළුවන් entities ගණනාවක් ඉන්නවා ඒ entities ලා agreement එකට එනවා අපි ship එකක් හදමු අපි නැවක් හදමු එකතු වෙලා නැවක් හදමු ඉතින් ඊට පස්සේ අපිට පුළුවන් ඒ නැව විකුණන්න ඒක හැම වෙලේ proceeds ටික බෙදා ගන්න එතන business එකක් නැහැ operation එකක් තමයි තියෙන්නේ එහෙම නැත්තම් අපි දුම් pharmaceutical companies දෙකක් they may come into agreement to produce a particular drug for corona let's say covid 19 right so the corona virus is better beheta hoya ganna well established pharmaceutical companies deka uh, operation ekak patan ganna so that is also an example for a joint operation so therefore joint arrangement of two types so it's the most crucial aspect is the joint control here we have the joint control over a entity here we have a joint control over a operation right that's it that is just for the knowledge right okay fine so whatever it is when it come to kind of joint arrangement investment in joint arrangement it must be a non current asset ekat ape non current asset ekak pendo what about investment in associate so in fact earlier we discussed the investment and associate me if you have investment ranging in between 20 to 50% say it's 40% or something it's associate so when it come to associate uh, the distinguishing feature how do you distinguish investment from subsidiary from investment in associate in a subsidiary what you have is the control you have the dominance over another entity so api gatto investment in subsidiary can have a majority of the shares then api to entity ek apita 
शास मैं खाली जब तू दाहर नहीं होयो तो डर एंटी डी एक शास आप इतनी है ना सी एट हैटाक किया ला इस पॉइंट अबाउट दिस जॉइंट अरेंजमेंट तो आप ही तो अब मेवा की तात पे एंटी डी ए साथ ही ना ए एंटी डी बी एंटी डी कर सी एंटी डी के कोटास प्राप्त दाने सी एट हैटाक कर पत्र कर गई ना ए सी एट हाथली तो मेवा की अवस्था वो तो बी इज हैविंग द मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द शास सो दे आपको व्हाट बी इज गेटिंग इन दिस अरेंजमेंट बी हैज द कंट्रोल बी गाव थी एंड मुखार्द कंट्रोल लेके बी तो पुलवां सी वर कंट्रोल करन को हम तो कंट्रोल करन so if you have majority of the shares let's say that in the cplc you know when it come to a company how it is managed that is through the board of directors board of directors and the management committee when it come to board of directors let's assume that the board may consist of 10 members okay then board the game members so the higher kingdom then out of these 10 members you have a capacity to appoint how many members members are key dinik patra gan puluwan bplc ekak tama shares you know when it come to the shares one share is equal to one vote so therefore when it come to this cplc you have voting rights of 60% of the votes apa voting right ekak c eta hata so if you have 60% voting right in a situation where there would be like 10 members represent in the board you have a capacity to appoint six board of direct members six directors you can appoint depending on your shareholding you can appoint six directors so if you appoint six directors you have the majority of the directors so when it come to the decisions the always it is go by the majority and when come to the majority it is always enjoyed by bps and that's how i would claim that the b would control the c e vidhira tamai entity b eka entity c ver control kara majority of the shares the but if you look at it from the other entity's point of view a's point of view it has 40% of the shares probably it is not up to the control control karan beha ne but majority ka nahi namut aplc ka puluwang make a kind of significant influence we call it significant influence you can make a significant influence that's what you can do apit puluwang significantly influence right okay it's a significant influence apit control karanna ba aplc ka control karanna bari we see ba namuth yam kisi aakare ka selaki yutu balapayama karanna puluwang how he he can do that the aplc can do that because in a situation where there is 10 board members depending on the shareholding they can appoint 40% that is in the sense four di four directors can be appointed so eta puluwang wenawa tamange sha ownership ek matra padana vela directors la hatara denek pat kara etakota directors la hatara kinna kiyanne thirnayak ganna vela awata yam kisi aakara eka bala thayamak karanna puluwa me c plc ke decisions ganiddi operation decisions e wage finance decisions මේ වගේ කරුණු කාරණා වලදී ඒකත් යම් කිසි ආකාරයක බලපෑමක් කරන්න පුළුවන්. so i can make kind of significant influence. hence it is what we call the investment in associate. right? so that is just to explain you with a kind of situation. the question is about whether you can classify this investment in associate as a current or non current. yes it is a non current. again it is non current. then you have amount due from related companies so you have amount due from related companies so that is in the sense so you know uh, you can have like uh, the friendly entities say that it is parent subsidiary relationship if i'm just go back to that it's a parent subsidiary relationship so therefore a might sell goods to c so in that if the sorry b might sell goods to c and let's say the b sells goods on credit if the b sells goods on credit they would be having receivables they would be having receivable balances in their statement of financial position 
And when you come to these receivable balances, what is that? That is amount due from related parties. When you come to the B, C is a related party. Similarly, when you come to C, B is a related party. So it is one example for related parties. So if you have related party receivables, it is what we call the amount due from related parties. What is that? It is a current asset. It's a current asset. So therefore, ninth one, it is current asset. Then you have financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. Say that you acquire some shares of another entity. Say that uh, you acquire a uh, thousand shares of another entity and you have acquired these shares with the intention of resale. When the prices goes up, you want to sell this investment and make a profit out of that. But why I mean shares at Patraganity in a Tawat company, Mila Hilgi Hama. So your intention is what we call trading. If you had acquired a particular investment with the intention of trading, the suitable classification, what we call it financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. And now suitable classification financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. Financial asset take a fair value with the which are not through profit or loss. So if you have financial asset at fair value through profit or loss investments, and it's a current investment. Why is that? Are you a current investment take up in current asset take up in? Mokada, a vatkam api atpat karaganti in never, never the beginning in a parama. So the Godak will have a kitty car in a vikunanati in a chance a very. Himanang a current asset take up in. Is that clear? So if you are clear, with, if you are not clear, then please let me know. I can further explain. Then we have financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income. Say that you purchase shares uh, with a purpose other than trading. If you acquire shares of another entity with a purpose other than trading, then that is called the financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income. What is that? Api Yamkisi entity ekka api tumu dahar na kujiyata shya satpat karagani no e shya satpat karagani ne vikini me paramaathe ne nevata vikini me paramaathe ne ena api purpose ekka vikini me nevata vikini me no na avasthavaka e vaga investment ekka api kiya no financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income. So what ekka udahar na kujiyata Mokak the purpose other than trading. Trading will have a purpose. What about a kind of strategic investment? Strategic investment, right? What do you mean by strategic investment? It's like this. Api Shasta no api api APLC, right? Your APLC. And you want to purchase shares of another entity, say BPLC, BPLC. At the moment, what you do, you purchase 10% of the shares of BPLC. And you acquire these shares, not with the intention of resale. But your purpose is something strategic. What is that purpose? Uh, you are in the process of accumulating the shares because in the future, you want to be in control. You have intention, strategic intention, that you want to one day control BPLC. Apetino purpose ekak mokakda, apetino ne kavada hari dalasaka BPLC eka control kara. Ito or ada apisi eka dahayak gatta, anagate yamis dalasaka tawasi eka pahak gani, ekor ta tawakale ak gil tawasi eka dahayak gani, me vidhi eka api himi eka BPLC eka shas kotasin kotasa gani. So, the majority of the shares are controlled. The shares are not controlled. The shares are not controlled. The shares are not controlled. So, it is something that we consider as a non current asset. So, financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income, it's a non-current asset. Take a non-current 
I said take up the loan, right? So that's what we do. Yes, uh, another intention that is indicated that even it could be the purpose of getting a kind of dividend income. You have invested in shares. Uh, when you come to that particular entity, you find that uh, they are paying a kind of sound dividend, right? So therefore, you have simply acquired these shares to keeping that with you and uh, to earn a kind of dividend income in the future. If it is a kind of company that paying a kind of good dividend, then uh, you do not want to uh, sell the shares. You may simply purchase shares and you may simply retain that and uh, over the years you are simply earning a rental income so it's a kind of investment yes that also a financial asset at fair value to other companies income asset example good yes you are there right so that is something uh, what seems that we can discuss for the day so in the next class uh, i'll be taking uh, the first three questions and uh, also the questions that is left probably third and fourth one right okay uh, then for the day shall we stop our discussion okay then uh, thank you so see you in the next class